Hello, my name's Stuart Cross and this is Strategy Confidential. Episode 4, the top 10 innovation killers. Innovation has never been as important as it is today in terms of driving growth, yet there remains a huge gulf between the rhetoric of our organisational leaders and the reality of the ground. But why is innovation so hard to achieve? I think there are forces at work in many organisations that impede innovation, and I call these the innovation killers. Here are my top 10 innovation killers. At number 10, professional management. Professional managers bring many benefits to organisations. They bring control, they bring professionalism, they bring focus, and they bring uh, execution capabilities. But what they can also do is to reduce the level of risk and creativity organisations are willing to, to, to play and get involved with. At number nine is a desire for a magic pill, not a daily exercise regime. Many businesses just want an immediate quick win solution, but that is hardly likely to happen. Innovation needs to be a way of life. And at Whirlpool, for example, they have trained literally thousands of their employees and created a whole system of innovation in the business, which they credit with over two, three billion dollars worth of sales over the last 12 months or so. Number eight, too many priorities. Trying to win on too many fronts impedes progress on any one front. Innovation requires pace. And if you're trying to do too many things, you simply cannot generate the pace required. Amazon have decided to focus on just three areas for their innovation. That is, increasing the, the range and choice that they offer their customers, increasing the speed at which they uh, deliver solutions to customers, and reducing cost. Anything else, they don't tend to focus on innovation. They just have three priorities. Number seven is an ex excessive customer focus. Customers are poor predictors of their own future behaviour. They can't tell you what they want or even how they're going to behave with something new. Back in the early 90s, when Renault created a new type of car called the Twingo, over half of the customers that they tested at the testing stage said they hated it. It took a letter from the head of design to the chief executive to get the go-ahead for, 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 for the Twingo, but it became one of Renault's biggest successes and created a model that led to other car developments for that business. Number six is an emphasis on problem solving. Let me ask you a question. Who are the heroes in your organisation? Are they the innovators, the people who develop new businesses, or are they the people who can sort out a crisis, get things, uh, sort out problems, make the bad stuff go away? In many organisations, it's problem solvers, not innovators, who are the real heroes. Linked to that, at number five, is an emphasis on getting it right first time. This is really important to do in terms of everyday processes and operations of a business. But Six Sigma simply doesn't work when it comes to innovation. You need more latitude. You need to create an environment where creativity is more accepted. You are unlikely to get it right first time with innovation. At number four is a reliance on a small internal team. You simply can't expect uh, an internal team down, down the corridor in room 17B to come up with an innovation for a whole organisation. And many organisations now are creating external networks to drive their growth. In IT, for example, open source development has driven um, huge new products such as the Firefox search engine. And Apple have created a storm of activity through their apps for their iPhones. But it's not just in technology. Procter & Gamble, the, the consumer goods business, now seeks over 50% of its new product development from outside the organisation. Number three, in terms of innovation killers, is an unwillingness to cannibalise sales. That desire just to protect what we already sell to, to customers. I've always really admired Gillette as a company because they have been willing to cannibalise the brands that they already own and run with. 
So first of all they had Sensor, then they developed Sensor XL, then they got rid of that and created Mark III, and then they got rid of that and created Gillette Fusion. At each stage they provided more benefit, but they have been the driving force of their own cannibalization. And number two is incremental goals. If you only set yourself incremental goals, then you can more or less find a way to deliver against those goals with what you already do. It's only by really raising the bar and set, setting stretching goals that drives innovation. Tesco, for example, have recently said that they want their retailing services business, which includes their Tesco bank, to, to, de to, to deliver profits of £1 billion over the next five years. That level of stretch is going to create a whole load of innovation. They simply can't do it by doing what they already do. And the number one killer of innovation is an intolerance or fear of failure. Business Week did a survey of the top innovators in Silicon Valley. And these innovators agreed that the number one factor which drove their success was their ability to experiment fearlessly. Innovation is 90% failure. The idea is not to avoid failure, but to fail quickly and to fail as cheaply as possible. Those are my top 10 innovation killers. Driving innovation in your organisation requires exterminating each of these killers. How many of them are still lurking in your business? Mm -hmm.